Bienvenue à « Comment gagner de l'argent » et « Comment créer une entreprise et augmenter vos revenus » avec Glendon Cameron. Hey, what's going on? It's Glendon and I'm um, heading to the gym to wrap up this day. Great day, great day. Did another episode of How to Make Money, Build a Business webinar. And uh, had people, international participants. This is pretty cool. Someone that's in China, someone that's in Colombia, and uh, I've noticed more and more international folks are jumping on the things that we're doing, so that's pretty cool. Just to give you an update of what's going on, every Monday, 3 p.m., as it is said today, today, and every Wednesday, wow, traffic's kind of insane up here, I'm going to do how to make money, how to build a business, open form webinar sometimes there'll be structure sometimes there won't there's a little structure but mostly it's for people to call in and ask business questions on how to make money uh, the participation's pretty cool it's pretty awesome and if I can get this guy who's in China because I asked him I was like hey hit me up let's go ahead and do either a hangout or a spree cast or something because he's in China he's there and one of the things I love about being in touch with people who are on the other side of the world is you get the real deal. You get to see what's going on because we hear all these things like, well, it's like this in China and it's like this in Europe. I think it's great to talk to someone who is there, who's experiencing it. Uh, when I did the recast with uh, Roland, that was pretty good stuff. So it's going to be things like that. And as it is now, it's every Monday and every Wednesday. 3 p.m. I may shift the time around, play around with that. Also, I want to talk to you about a recent consult. This person's new to the business world, and it's really harder, I think, for people to go from an employee mindset to an employer mindset. And that's what this person's struggling with because left a job, built this business in the second year, and the business is successful. They're supporting their family, they're doing things, but the person knows that the business could be much better because they have uh, trade shows and stuff, and there are people he's talking to, and they're just doing much better than he is, and, he, and he's like, hey, what what is the deal? And we kind of sourced it out. Smart guy. The problem was he was still doing stuff as an employee with an employee mindset, which I know you're going like he had the business for two years. He, many people, the journey from follower to leader is a long one. It doesn't happen overnight. You can have the business. You could be running stuff. But in here, you don't feel that you're actually the boss. The, the big kahuna and it really crops up and creates problems there's some things that we'll discuss because I put out and many you know someone was asking I'm always predicting all these bad things that are going to happen with jobs and careers well I'm not the only one there's a guy google his name Andrew McAfee MIT professor he and his partner they talk about this you know 60 minutes and he said in an interview that he's kind of scared like what's going to happen we're running into a problem, and I don't know how it's going to impact you because I don't know you, but if you are not in certain fields, and healthcare is not immune. I talked to one consult last week and someone this weekend that nurses out of nursing school with no experience are not being hired. They're, have, they're struggling to find jobs in certain areas. I know someone's going to come up here, well, my sister was a nurse and she found a job straight out of high school nursing school whatever but that's i i've saw nurses get laid off when i was in healthcare. i know it happens and that's just because there's a glut of untrained nurses understand when you're the best at what you do in any field you're not going to have to worry about money it'll find you and that's not everyone with this new world that i think is coming is we're going to have widespread 
low employment, well, underemployment. People will be able to find jobs or they'll be able to find two jobs or three jobs or four jobs or however many gigs they need to make it in the world. Because there's something that I've noticed that is fundamentally profound to me that is getting harder for young adults to go out on their own. I left when I was 18, never went back. I joined the military. Many people's like, I'm not joining the military. I say, hey, that's your choice. But it was, for me, it was a way out of a small town. And when I got out the military, I had skills to get a job. Whereas, when I got out of the military, there was a recession in 1991. There was a recession. I, I, I found a job very quickly. I had actually a choice of jobs. Now we're running into a spot, and someone actually put on the webinar that it's government, greed, poor policy. <clears throat> There's a lot of reasons that many people will become unemployed or underemployed. Underemployment in my mind is just as bad in some cases worse than unemployment when you don't have a job and you don't have money coming in you understand why you don't have money you don't have a job but when you are working your ass off and you're still not making it that will tend to fuck with your mindset that's going to create some problems it's going to create a different level of expectations because i was running about and i noticed something and well, I paid attention because it's been in front of my face for a long time. That there are many people my age who are working at McDonald's, Walmart, Publix, not to cast aspersions on people's jobs. It's just, I don't think if they had a choice, they would be there. That's my thing. And there are many, many people who are put in situations that they're not going to make what I call a living wage. And this is my definition. I didn't get it off a chart. But I feel that if you live in the city of Atlanta and for you to live well, in my opinion, once again, the as a single person, as a single person, you should be about 65. As a single person, 65. Because you're going to lose 18 to 20 of that in taxes of some form. And that's going on, healthcare, whatever. So that's going to leave you close to 40 G's, which is um, about 3,200 take home, $1,600 every two weeks. Puts you in a very nice position to have a very robust life. You got student loans, you can pay them. And that, that's as a single person. If you have kids, whoa, man, that's, uh, that's a whole nother dynamic because you're going to lose, uh, what? 800 to over a thousand bucks for child care times 12 that's that's a lot of cheese so and if you are married with kids i believe once again these are numbers that i have in my head you should be knocking at the 105 to 125 thousand per year and that's not getting rich or living some extravagant lifestyle that is living and not feeling constrained and feeling that, oh God, will we be able to pay the mortgage or will we be able to pay the car notes and stuff? And I'm just speaking in a broad sense because if you're making 125000 in my opinion, you shouldn't have a car note or you shouldn't have one for long. In my opinion, if you have a proper plan, this stuff of uh, doing stuff for 18, 20 years is ridiculous. But that's where I think you should be to have a comfortable lifestyle here in Atlanta. Uh, other places, it would be more expensive. In some places, you can do it on half of that because if you're out there in Boondocks, Montana, don't know if that exists or not, you could probably do quite well on 65 because it's the Boondocks. And then again, I don't know what heating costs may be because it gets pretty damn cold up there. But I, I run this stuff around, and as I said on the webinar today, that I am scared of what's going to happen with the future because just because you're comfortable and you're doing the right things doesn't mean that people who haven't done the right things or who aren't comfortable are going to respect what you're doing and leave you the fuck alone. Uh, one of my big fears is anarchy and uh, I mean riots and stuff. Seriously. We're talking about people going hungry. I mean, what do they have to lose by rising? They don't have any money. They, they're, they're starving kids are looking shabby uh, they're, 
there's a lot of, I mean, what incentive do they have not to ride? And I'm speaking in future tense of what I think is going to happen because I don't know. I, my crystal ball gets cloudy. I don't know what's going to happen because people are not going to stop fucking and uh, kids are going to continue to be born. So we're going to have this population that we're not going to have. And I'm not trying to say people are not worth anything, but they, there won't be shit to do. And we don't have a real need for them in terms of providing services or whatever to the human cause. I know it's very clinical and it's going to piss a lot of people off, but right now, we have a lot of people who are um, a drain on the system. Don't do anything. Don't contribute. Um, it's a problem. And it's uh, all colors, races, religions. There's a, there's a lot of people who are just sucking options. I mean, maybe we're going to have this utopia where no one has to work. And, and there will be this critical melting pot of money for everyone. Ha ha, I don't think that's going to happen. Not here in the United States. No time soon. But if you are worried about your future, you're worried about what you're going to do because on the webinar I talked about, I mean, you, you have a great job right now. I talk to respiratory therapists. Uh, I've, talk, I've talked to people in so-called safe jobs and they're saying, no, it's not like that. And this is one of the wonderful things that I do is I get to talk to people who are in a lot of different fields all over the place and I can give you real-time information so my thoughts as a hedge against this and I'm speaking from a myopic standpoint because it helped me if I did not have a business I do believe I would have been fucked because it's just I look at choices that I made and they were hard choices and there were some trials and tribulations with the source, like from going from storage auctions to publishing company, just the laughter and the looks and the way that people talked about me. It's like, hey, you got a good thing doing. If it was me, I would do this. And are you crazy, man? I still need my hookup. And on and on and on. The litany just was ridiculous. And also, because I work from home and I don't have quote, a real man job, as, some, as it got back to me, someone said that, well, he doesn't have a real man job, what the fuck does that mean, I make real fucking money, but um, in this new world, there's going to be more of people like me, who make money from this, versus making money from that, that's, that's just what's going to happen, and you know, you can hate the process and the technique, but the results are stunning, and that's another thing. Because uh, one of the things I think is I'm a, a therapist to other entrepreneurs because when you're the only one in your family who's doing something entrepreneur like or hunt, you know, being an entrepreneur or hustling or doing whatever you can that puts money in your wallet outside of conventional methods, people have everything to say. Uh, one of my clients, her mother is terrified that she is going to just become a, a spinster. She used that word, I didn't. And just she doesn't know that her daughter makes more money than her and her husband combined. Because one of the things I tell my clients, I have another person, I'll talk to that in a minute, that your family was going to respond to you making a lot of money in two ways that are not good for you usually. Some people are going to be like, thank God I don't have to give you any money. You're supporting yourself. I'm proud of you. You know, you're going to get people like that, and it feels good. It makes your chest swells up because you're proud. Then well, the other two, which you're going to have with a greater degree of propensity, <laughs> is, yo, can I get a loan? Or, so what you're telling me is you still don't have a job. You will get uh, derision, ridicule, mockery. You'll get all that stuff. Because she is just, because I, I was like, don't tell people how much money you make. You will be judged upon that. You will be treated differently, and the expectation is that you should share. Forget that you lived with crazy people and you saved 50% of your salary to start your business. No, 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 young lady. No, 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 no. You need to share that shit that you earned on your own merits with the rest of them because that's what good people do. And uh, she's 
in her family tree is kind of jacked up like that. And I say, hey, you don't need to let your mom. She she just she struggles because she wants to let her mother know. And I say, your mom's not going to be proud. Your mom's is more concerned with position and prestige of position than actual earning income and potential. Because her business, I mean, the way she's going, she'll probably be a gross seven figures in the next two years. And, you know, when you get to store and you have people working for you and they are buying down and calling you the woman, yeah, okay, at that time, mom may come around. But before then, uh, not so much. N not so much. Uh, you're going to have problems. Then another one of my clients, he makes more money than his mother, his father, and brother. We all live in the same house and he's catching hell because he's changed you know he's you know success changes you it does and it's not a bad thing and if they knew it would just be problems because i'm telling you i am i'm just telling you from so many experiences that unless you have a success that fits in this box of other people's expectations of what your success should be you it's problems and i mean it's just really really crazy how many problems you can have trying to live a life of your own vocation of your own intention but uh he's going through it right now because he's the only one in his circle you know he's outgrown his upbringing and when you do that it kind of puts you in a weird space you feel a little lost and un un uh, anchored because many of the things that you grew to new as a young person, you're seeing like, oh, that shit was false. <laughs> oh, that was a lie. Oh, that was the Jedi mind trick. I mean, it, it's um, a lot of this stuff creates angst and it makes you become introspective on a different level because as uh, my consulting business grows, I'm talking to people across all kinds of fields, and a lot of people have similar problems. Because the family thing, I only have one person whose family is right behind him, and they are like incredibly supportive. I mean, like the fucking Waltons. I mean, they're like John Boyd, Mary Sue Ellen. All, I mean, they're like the Waltons. I mean, I did a consult with him, and his mother was there, and she was just listening, and she was so polite, and she was so nice, and she's like, wow, you're really doing great things, son. I am so proud of you. I was like, wow, your mom's the best. Dad, dad, same thing. You know, they do whatever they can to help him. Uh, for you people who have those type of uh, support systems, cherish them. They're not the norm from what I am seeing. They're not. <laughs> I mean, it's like, I, some dude, I find myself when I call him and we're doing the call, so it's like, hey, how's your mom? Because she's so freaking cool. She is so freaking cool. Just a nice lady. Like I said, you get that kind of support, cherish it, because it is not the norm. And uh, he is the only one. That's not to say that other people don't have those kind of support systems, but I think uh, many people are going through what I went through. Family doesn't understand, because if you're the first person to do something entrepreneurial in the family, it could be really a burden on both sides, whether they, they're with it and it's like, hey, you need to shell out some money or they're not with it. Hey, you need to get a real job. You need to go to school. I have uh, another client who dropped out of school, went to Europe, did all kind of stuff, which actually gave him the skills for him to do what he's doing right now. And his folks are on his ass. The guy's, what, 30, 30? They're on him like you wouldn't believe. And he's got his own house, which is paid for. Car paid for. But what he does, and, you know, I never tell what my people do because, you know, it's not right. You know, everyone's looking for a great business ideal. And I'm, I have clients with some killer concepts. And, you know, he, he's living his life and everyone's in his ass because... His business is so robust, he doesn't have to work a lot. <laughs> he doesn't have to work a lot. And people are like kind of thinking he's selling drugs or something. He told me that. He's like, the word in the family is I'm a drug dealer. It's like, really? I mean, he do call me up distressed. He's like, look, hey man, you know, uh, I need to talk to somebody. Uh, and this just went down, went to a family uh, cookout. And you know, now the word is I'm a drug dealer. And I, He's not a drug dealer. 
and he doesn't do porn, but it's different what he does. And it's just, it's crazy what happens when you're different. It is crazy, crazy, crazy. So I'm not only going to give you the good, I'm going to actually let you know some of the pitfalls of you being successful, but I will tell you, it's worth it to me. Um, I've asked some of my clients, they said, oh, hell fuck yes, it's worth it. Because when you have to deal in, in everyone's life, you're gonna deal with some some stuff. I don't care how much money you make, you're gonna deal with some stuff. It's just gonna happen. But when you control your life, you control a lot of the stuff you have to deal with. Because uh, this is my talk. I give it to my class. I give it to you. You start doing well. Keep your family out your business. Keep them out. If they need help and you are able to help them without hurting yourself, go right ahead. Help them. I've done it. Um, but do not become the bank. Learn to say no. It's not you're a bad person if you say no. And it, no, you're not a bad person if you have money and other folks who didn't do the things that you did. It, it, it's not bad. It's not bad. You're not a bad person. You're not evil. You don't hate anyone. It's your life, your efforts, your earnings, your money. And I'm saying this to someone who's struggling with this because someone hit them up for a loan because her dad <laughs> was able to look in her account because she had the same account since she was high school and he's still on there. And he saw that she had $50,000 in there. And all of a sudden he wants to do this. He wants to do that. And she says, that's all the money I have in the world. And I make good money. And I'm, you know, and the girl is saving like three G's a month. She's different kind of chick. And she's like, now he's on her. Then, you know, the mom found out. And all of a sudden, they are spending her money. <laughs> They're talking about a family trip. They're talking about potentially uh, going to a cruise. I mean, and she's just like, I can't believe they're doing this. It's like, um, they, she, uh, she grew up, like I did, very poor. And uh, no one in her family has anything, so she's going through it. So <laughs> if you still have your parents and they have access to your accounts, you need, and you start making a lot of money, you may need to change that. I'm just saying, you know, it's your life, do what you want, but she's catching hell. And the last few weeks have been a lot of that. Uh, people who are doing well, uh, hopefully I have some more positive stories for you because uh, it's been a lot of drama lately. It's been a lot of drama with that stuff. Because when you change and you become successful, you change your energy on who you are. You um, you disrupt a lot of energy patterns. And it can be a very turbulent ride. But you keep working, keep doing what you're doing. At some point, you'll transcend that and all the turbulence will go away. And life will be happy. And then you can... Uh, keep doing what you want to do but just giving you the ups and downs of being a business owner i think that for you it's the best way to go i still have my stance on education i think it's you're an idiot if you're going to spend 60 70 80 90 hundred thousand dollars for a degree that will not give you the skills to repay that law if the criteria was used to anyone else going to a bank or any institution saying, hey, that's the first thing they ask. Do you have the ability to repay before they grant you the money? If that was the criteria, most folks wouldn't get these student loans. And it would probably be a good thing because you wouldn't be in this debt you couldn't pay back. Because I read a stat between 2000 and 2011, educational costs increased 37, 40%. While the buying power of the dollar... And I mean... That's, I just told you something. You got this debt, which has interest, which accumulates, and your dollar is getting smaller. So it's going to take more of those small dollars to pay off that large loan. You could really get a you know, $100,000 know, $100, loan, but because when you factor in inflation, you factor in all these other things, that that loan may take you two hundred and fifty, three hundred thousand $300,000 to pay back if you go to the length of the loan. And not to mention things you can't buy and do, like get married, buy a house, and have children. The cost can be quite significant. So, like I said, you know, do what you want to do. But I believe, especially, and I'm going to go ahead and use culture, the, the cultural thing of 
black, if you're a black male, probably the best thing you can do for yourself is to start a business at an early age and learn the ins and outs of how to make money legally without a job. I think that's the best thing going because from what I'm seeing, if you do not know how to approach people in certain corporate, you know, corporate America, if you don't have the continence and the ability to talk to a lot of people on a level that they can respond, meaning, hey, um, I, I just really, you know, corporate America is fucking white guys. I want you to think about that. Corporate America is fucking white guys. So <laughs> I I know this. I know this. And people are like, oh, hell no. You know, they run them. No, 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 no. No. Um, a lot of bad things are happening to men across the board. So just take note of that. All right. So uh, tomorrow, uh, let's see, like I said, not tomorrow. What is the day? What is the day? It is Wednesday. It is Wednesday. So it may be in the morning when you get this. It may be the night, depending on when I upload it. But Monday and Wednesday for sure, 3 p.m. Links below. Uh, I may change platforms. I'm thinking about giving another platform a little love. But that's going to be the thing going on. Ask any question you want, and uh, we're going to have fun. All right, this is Glendon, and I'll see you on the good side.